Welcome back, everybody. My name is Grace, or Gibby, whatever you prefer. And today I'm here with a complete guide to the Medea challenge boss fight. Now what you're looking at here is some background footage of me uh, getting to the end of the quest. And then I have six different methods where you can kill Medea. Um, but before I get to those, I'm going to explain her mechanics while I kill these monsters. So first, she has several mechanics, but the chief one is that she rotates her elements. Medea's attacks first with water, then light, then water again, then wind, then the cycle repeats. So water, light, water, wind, uh, water, light, water, wind, etc. And it just continues in that way. So the important thing also is that it continues that way, but if you stun her, the counter still goes. So she's attacking with water, and next turn she's going to attack with light, but you stun her. She won't attack with light that turn, but she will attack with water the next turn. So the cycle will continue if she's stunned. Her next big mechanic is her counterattack mechanic. And um, this counterattack mechanic is pretty significant. What it does is every time you hit Medea, she does a counterattack of the element she's going to attack with next turn. So make sure to use limited multi hit effects because um, each hit counts as one of her counterattack hits. So if you use a high hit countability that does the same damage as a low hit countability, you'll take a lot more damage than if you just used a lower hit count ability. Also, this makes it so that celerity methods using skills to do damage to her and off element armors are generally weaker. So do be careful if you're going to do that. Make sure to balance your offense and defense. This counterattack can be dodged and backlashed, however, so that's something to keep in mind, and two of my methods do use that mechanic. Her third big mechanic is her status cleansing abilities. She doesn't have freedom, she doesn't have 30 boss boost, um, but when you inflict a status on her, she does a quick cast um, spell or ability, which cleanses the most recent status inflicted on her for a tiny fraction of her MP pool. Uh, I think it's like 5%. You'd have to inflict a billion statuses for her to run out. Um, but it only cleanses the most recent status inflicted. So if you, the player, inflict a status and then your pet inflicts a status, she will always cleanse the status that your pet inflicts first. So there are probably some cool methods using stacked status inflictions to make sure you can build a strong status but she doesn't remove it. Um, but that's a little complicated so none of my methods use that. She also has a healing mechanic. This healing mechanic is pretty simple, but a few times in each battle, usually at about half HP, a quarter HP, and near the end of the fight, um, Medea channels a healing spell, and so it takes up her turn, and that can be interrupted in one of two ways, by stunning her, or by hitting her six or more times with the correct element. For the normal mode, it doesn't matter what element you hit her with, um, you just have to hit her six or more times. Now the correct element in this case is the opposite of whatever she was going to attack with um, on her next turn. So if she attacks you with light and then, or if she's about to attack you with light and then she does her healing charge up, you know the next turn she's going to attack you with water, so you need to hit her with energy. Um, and again, you need to hit her six times or you just need to stun her. Um, for the challenge mode, keep in mind, if you hit her with other elements as well, each hit of the wrong element reduces the total counter. So if you hit her six times with an energy effect, but then your pet hits her twice with, say, a light effect or a dark effect or a dark attack, um, her heal will go through because you'll have six energy, but two of the wrong elements, you'll only have hit her four times on her counter. If her heal goes through, she also gets permanent alien power and permanent accuracy. So she becomes a lot harder to manage. Her fifth mechanic is pet and guest stunning. Each time your pet and guest hit her, it builds up a counter. And each time that counter hits three, Medea will try to counterattack your pet and guest. And that will attempt to paralyze them for a turn. For the normal version, the counter is six instead of three. The paralyzed resistance is her strength roll versus the player's endurance. Um, so endurance will make your pets and guests get paralyzed less. If your pet and guest misses, or if they target the player instead, like with healing, then she doesn't add to her stun counter. 
This is a pretty unimportant mechanic unless you're a Beastmaster. I recommend using boosters or healing pets to um, completely negate this issue. Finally, her last big mechanic is her Void Nuking. If you attack her directly with Harm or Void, she has a dialogue pop-up and switches to Void Attacks and Counter Attacks. This is obviously very bad because you can't defend against them, so don't attack her directly with Harm or with Void. Backlash and Dodge Lash and other similar effects that do Harm damage though don't trigger this, so you can use those and not worry about it. That should be all the mechanics. Let's get right into the first method, which is a Yolger only Mage method. Okay, so with the mechanics explanation done, we're going to do a restricted gear, Yolger only restrictions, mage kill. Now this is going to be a pretty simple method. I'm going to be switching between the armors and basic attacking whenever I feel like it. Uh, and I've got a mana healing guest or pet and a HP healing guest. Now the things I'm going to be doing to interrupt the uh, healing spell, because that's the only mechanic you really have to worry about are using three multi-hit spells. Nocturnal Night Raiders for Dark, when she's going to attack with Light. The Silver Lightning Rods, Chain Lightning, for when she's going to attack with Water. And Loremaster Tomes, the Ugly, for when she's going to attack with Earth. Now, if you're just base 250 Intellect, you don't have a 100% hit rate on 82 Magic. Your BTH is 75, so you have a 7% chance to miss. One way to counter that, it's using Nerf Kin until it removes the MRM by 7, or lowers it by 7. Um, but for this case, I'm not going to be doing that. I'm just going to use Ring of Precision when I need to cast spells to make sure they hit and make sure I interrupt the healing. With all that being said, I'm going to play some music, you'll see what I do, and um, I'll just get right into the kill.
just going to get right into it and this is a yolger only method i'm currently running dexterity endurance and charisma now at the time of recording the infinite ramping changes are um, live so i am going to be aided a little bit by the infinite ramping but mostly the method is just pretty simple i'm just going to be attacking the boss down and for that is because i just wanted to see if you can beat her while ignoring that healing and ramping mechanic so I'm going to see what happens and I'm just going to attack as normal and see if we can take down the boss. Now, if we do end up dying to the boss after the ramping starts, um, I'll come back again with another method and show you what you can do. So that being said, I'm going to turn off the audio and put on some music. Here is the dodge lash cheesy method. Um, so for this for this method, you have to be able to get 100% dodge. There are a lot of pretty easy ways to do that. Uh, I'm going to use the hair razor magician or the ghost costume armor. Uh, they're both dodge armors. You could also use shadowfall raiment. Uh, whatever, pick your poison. It doesn't really matter. I even did it in my no drop, which is just normal MRM. Uh, but just for the video, just in case something goes a little wrong, uh, I'm going to use ghost costume. Um, but basically what we're going to do is we're going to stack up tons and tons of dodge for multiple turns. And then we're going to use Fireball Z twice, which will be 30 hit counts from her counter attack. Which will do a huge backlash damage with Titan's Fall. My Titan's Fall is called Tiamat's Memorial because it's the war recolor. No need to worry about that. So the first thing that I'm going to do is spam Shadow Feeder Pendant. I think like seven or eight turns will be more than enough. There's three. And we need it for the pet as well. So normally I like to skip pet celerity for a cheaper SP cost. Um, but this time we need it for the pet because obviously the Bun Banneret pet is part of our dodge. Um, so, yeah. If you don't have the Bun Bannerets, you can use the Paladin Apprentice and the uh, New Year's Ball or the Twisted Pig Drake or whatever. Um, doesn't really matter what you do. It's pretty easy to get 100% dodge. Um, if you have something like Big Dictionary or that one Ice Shield from the donation a couple years ago, you can use that too. Uh, but I'm trying to do it with mostly available items. Um, so again, if you don't have Bun Banneret, substitute in um, the Paladin guest for dodge or twisted pig drake or new year's light ball um but these spells imanak edok and terrapin shell those are permanently available and so is titan's fall multi mall i'm also using on berserk mode for dodge you can use the madam weapon or you can just not use it it's not actually required but the first thing we do to start off the dodge stacking is cast imanak edok then we spend two turns casting terrapin shell so as you can see, I've got already 60 defensive boost, then my pet and guest go, and now I've got 87. I've got like a billion MRM. So I've got two, two rounds of defensive boost. And what I'm gonna do here is actually equip Ring of Precision, because if your hits miss, she doesn't do her counter attack, so you can't dodge her counter attack. Make sure your Titan's Fall is toggled on, and now just cast Fireball Z. With Ring of Precision, you have pretty much 100% accuracy. I think it's like 95 or 98 or something. Um, but let's see, look, I still have one more turn of defense boost. And remember, your defense boost is active when it says zero rounds. So I am safe to cast Fireball Z one more time and let her swing on me. 
uh, she'll still miss. So again, I've got a massive defense boost. She can't hit me, and look at that. 4.6k damage. Now, I'm going to calculate how much damage that actually was before her damage cap modified it. So I'm going to pause and then restart the recording. Okay, so damage caps are kind of complicated, but because of her damage cap, I did some, I did like a reverse calculation, and that 4.62 damage was originally 11k damage because I blocked 30 hits with the Titan's Fall. So, uh, just really nuts numbers. And now we have Celerity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drink a potion uh, just to get my mana back. And now I have no defense boost. But luckily, the Bun Bannerets are going to act and give me a full um, amount of blocking for my next turn. So I'm going to just drink another potion so that I have enough mana to uh, spam the defense boost and then the Fireball Z. So I do a little bit more damage. And what I'm going to do now, let's see, 74. I think we need a little bit more defense than that for two Fireball Zs. Uh, yeah, because if the defense boost runs out while I'm casting Fireball Z, then uh, I'll take a bunch of counterattack damage and I'll die. Um, so first, since I still have a defense boost, I'm going to cast Fireball Z. And all her counterattacks are going to miss. But now that I have no defense boost, if I did that again, I would get hit 15 times and immediately die. So instead, I'm going to cast Imanok Edok. Uh, I could equip a defensive misc too. If you don't have the Madam weapons or multi Maul, you may as well use a defensive misc. But it's not really necessary for my setup. So I'm just going to use Terrapin Shell one time. And I should be all good to dodge now. And I think she's going to do her healing spell. Yep. So we hit her healing spell threshold, and then she took 1k. Uh, you can use anything to interrupt her healing. I'm going to use Love Potion, just because it's easy. Well, normally it's easy. Um, you can also equip Spotter Drake and switch to something like Necromancer Armor, um, just to make it a little easier. There we go. Charmed by Love Magic. Uh, so she's not going to act this turn. So I'm going to use this turn to restore my resources. Actually, yeah, because she doesn't do counterattacks on her healing turns. Uh, so I'm going to use this turn to restore my resources. It's kind of a waste because I have the defense boost. But I mean, I can't um, I can't dodge last year with the counterattack. So no, uh, no real loss. But yeah, I'm going to go back to Ghost Costume just because she won't attack anyways. And I have a Celerity turn left, so I'm going to just drink a Health Potion so I can get more SP. And then drink a Mana Potion. By the way, the reason I'm running Endurance is because Terrapin Shell scales off Endurance. Uh, so I needed that stat to make the defense boost much stronger. Let's get like two more turns of Celerity. Okay. Bring back out Bun Banneret. And again, it doesn't really matter how you do this. You can also just dodge Lasher like normal and wait for her to attack. It'll just be slower. I'm just showing this fun little uh, Fireball Z method because it's fun. It's different. It's unique. Um, I think I think I'm gonna do one cast of Terrapin Shell and then I'm gonna. No, I probably shouldn't attack. Let's see, 140 MRM. It's not quite safe. Yeah. Okay. I'll wait until um, next turn to do it. So I'm going to get my defense boost now, it'll tick down one turn, and then I will kill Medea with the next counterattack stack. So Ring of Precision, I have enough defense boost to cast Fireball Z twice and still tank her attack. Um, remember you need two turns of defense boost to cast Fireball Z twice. The first turn will block your counterattacks, the second turn will block the second counterattacks that I'm casting now, and the zero turn, which it's about to become, will block her attacks so that you won't take any damage. And she should die from this. See, block her attacks and 3k damage, she's dead. So that's one way to dodge lash the fight. Again, the normal method where you just play defensive and block all her attacks as she does them will also work. Uh, but I like this fast method where you're able to do 11k damage or 4.5k with the damage cap. 
um, with Titan's Fall. So yeah, really strong items. Dodge pretty much trivializes most of the bosses in the game. Uh, but here's the method for Medea. This method is going to be using probably one of the strongest armors in the game, the Daimyo Rider. Um, it's a rare golden gift box, and I'm going to be doing a Beastmaster strategy, and we're going to be doing the challenge mode. Now, Daimyo Rider is a light armor, um, which could potentially cause problems given that our friend here, uh, Medea, attacks with light and water and wind. We're not worried about that right now. What we're worried about is the Helenro Guest, which is a Paladin Guest, which only ever attacks with one hit. And with the Grenwog Jr. Pet, which is a pet that only ever attacks with one hit. Now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be equipping the correct shield and defensive misc. Uh, wrong shield. So I've got my Mutant Egg Defender for light, uh, Madam Barrier for wind, and Soul of Soul for water. Uh, and then for Misks, I've got Roly Poly Codpiece. This gives me Endurance, which will help me resist or Paralyze on my pets and guests. Angel Bells gives me Charisma and some Defense. And Lost Talon Vision Shard gives me some Dex and some Endurance, I believe. Let's actually check that. Yeah, so Endurance and Dexterity and Lux. So a little bit of BTH for my pets and guests. But with all that being said, I'm going to use Foam Finger and Eclipsed Dragon Lord's Patience to take down the boss and Helenro, the temporary guest from the Edge of Extinction, along with the Grandwalk Jr. pet, are going to carry me through. I've got healing seeds called Twilly and Sisters of Mercy, in case I need uh, healing support. Um, but we'll just get right into the kill. For the stuns, I have Love Potion and Essence Orb as a backup. Alright, now I'll start playing.
This last method is a pretty simple one, and it's gonna be using the Paladin slash Retro Golden passive effect, where you are able to, took me a second to find the armor, um, Champion Holy Arcanist, um, but the Paladin slash Retro Golden effect, if you have the Retro Golden armor and no Paladin for some reason, um, where you're able to Use Undeadify from Zorbax Ally Assist. And then if you use the Paladin Armor and the built-in Paladin Shield from the Paladin Armorman skill, all of the opponent's attacks hit as though they're the light element. So that one was light, um, but you'll see that when she attacks with wind, it'll still be acting like it hit my 13 resistance. Now, what I'm gonna do is use scramble mode on my ray gun. Except it's on ranged mode. Oh, but it worked anyways, okay. Well, what we're trying to do is set um, her light resist to 80. Now, it's not required to get 80 to light. You could use other damage sources in Paladin or Retro Golden, but since Paladin has such strong built-in light spells, um, I was just going to use the light spells to um, to damage her. Okay, this is taking a little while, so I'm going to pause the clip and restart it once I get the 80% to light. Okay, so you got the light scramble, so she's 80 to light. What I'm going to do now is use Retro Golden Axe and the Light Orb, just two simple items. Retro Golden Axe restores my resources when I hit light spells, and Light Orb just boosts all my light damage and accuracy. Next, I'm going to use Paladin Reinforcements and Summon Manifestation. This is also going to boost my light damage. The lag is a little intense though, so maybe I'll dis um, unsummon it. But let's activate my toggle for int, make myself fully offensive, and then I'll just spam Overwhelming Light or uh, the other version until I run out of resources. And then I'll drink a potion or whatever. Okay, but this guest is definitely too laggy. So I'm just gonna remove it. I'm gonna use Harmonic Light instead of Overwhelming. So I maintain my resources a little bit better. And that's pretty much the kill. This should be pretty quick. I'm going to ignore the stun mechanic since it's not that big a deal if you're just cheesing the um, offense of her abilities. She barely heals very much and um, I just do a lot of damage so it doesn't really matter. Okay, it looks like I've run out of mana. So I'm gonna use Efficient Inner Light now. Yeah, it still does a lot of damage. Because of her damage cap, it doesn't really matter which one you use, so it'll be a pretty quick kill, even so. And you can see I haven't healed at all during the fight. I do have 250 endurance. If you don't have any endurance, you might need to drink a health potion or have a healing guest or pet or another healing loop. Um, but for me, I'm just gonna continue going to town on Medea and probably get with the kill in the next couple turns. One thing I'm going to do actually is I'm going to finish off the kill with Sunscale's Legacy. Now you shouldn't start the kill with Sunscale's Legacy because if you use a Void or Harm attack, um, she switches to Void or Harm damage, but she can't switch to Void or Harm damage if she's dead as a door now. So there we go. Very easy Medea kill. It's super easy in Paladin or Retro Golden. You don't have to worry about switching armors and shields. Um, a little bit of a cheesy solution, but who doesn't love an easy kill like this? So that's my last and simplest method, um, which kind of ignores her mechanics, but because of the power of Paladin and Retro Golden, uh, it's still very easy. There we go. 
So we're going to quickly go over the rewards of the Medea challenge fight. Now, the only reward from the Medea challenge fight that isn't in the normal fight as well is the Prismatic Glory weapon, which is a ranged spear, which you can toggle to a bow. And they all have the same effect in the Prismatic Vanguard, the Prismatic Crescent, Prismatic Glory. They all have the same effect, which is a clone of the Kaisa Sword weapon's effect, which is, one, it has a very small percent chance, like 5 or 10%, to do extra Prismatic Burn damage on basic attacks, um, sort of like a special proc, but it doesn't interrupt weapon-based skills and other such things. And then second, if you click them, they switch to harm damage and pay SP and HP to do one, increased harm damage, and two, inflict a four-turn prismatic burn. This has a lot of uses for bosses with elemental effects. The Prism Heart Tome is an Earth Tome, which has a overcharged prismatic burn spell, a uh, earth spell that trades half of its damage to inflict an earth poison siphon. Um, on release, the poison siphon was bugged to only heal half as much uh, as it was supposed to, but that's been since patched, I believe, or it will be patched by the time you're watching this video. Finally, these two titles are um, the rewards for beating the challenge battle. Dr. Deltoid's Rainbow Pathfighter, and then finally, there's the Rainbow Path Festival portal painting. So those are all the rewards, and the Rainbow Glory and the titles are the two rewards for the challenge battle.